Welcome to another exciting video on the fossil record. My name is Benjamin Berger. One of the greatest things about paleontology is when a fossil is discovered that rebels against preconceived ideas. And none the better example of this is the enigmatic fossil primate skull that was found in Texas on July 1st, 1964. The skull was found by Texas paleontologist John Andrew Wilson, about 120 miles southeast of Juarez, Mexico, and only four miles from the Rio Grande River that marks the United States and Mexican border. It was found in the middle of the isolated Chihuahuan Desert. It was named Runia in honor of a local named F.P. Rooney who gave John Wilson a place to stay during his fieldwork in the desert. This remote area of the United States was being explored by a research team from the University of Texas, who were collecting fossils and studying the geology from the Chambers Tuff Formation, which had been dated to the late Eocene, about 36 to 35 million years ago. The primate skull defied easy explanation, as most fossil primates had become extinct in North America during the late Eocene as the global climate became colder. Furthermore, this primate skull looked very different than any previous primates discovered in the earlier Eocene epoch of North America. Many of these earlier fossils resembled primitive living lemurs and tarsiers. The skull looked more like a monkey. Since its discovery, paleoanthropologists have debated the placement of this fossil within recognized groups, or to simplify, whether this fossil represents an early monkey or not. Monkeys and apes are, scientifically speaking, placed in the suborder Anthropodidae. The suborder is split into three groups, the platyrines or New World monkeys from South and Central America, the catarines or Old World monkeys from Africa, Europe, and Asia, and the hominoids or apes and humans. Fossil platyrine monkeys appear during the late Oligocene and Miocene of Bolivia and Colombia and Argentina about uh, 28 million years ago. Now, older fossil sites in South America lack any platyrine fossil monkeys, and they lack any evidence of primates, except for a single tooth. And if you want to learn more about that unusual and weird occurrence, check out my video on it in the description below. One of the great mysteries in paleontology is the origin of these New World monkeys. Fossil monkeys are unknown to occur in North America during the Eocene or Oligocene, and the few lemur-like and tarsier-like primates remaining at the, during the late Eocene appear to have died out at the end of the Eocene. Only a few oddball questionable primates appear after the Eocene-Oligocene boundary in North America. So where did South American monkeys come from? And could this new fossil shed light on this mystery? There are two ideas. The first idea proposes that as the climate cooled down toward the end of the Eocene around 40 million years ago, the remaining North American primates were limited geographically to southern regions of the continent, such as Texas and Mexico. And from this isolated population, it appears that maybe a species was able to hop over to South America, and hence all South American monkeys living today are ancestors of this North American fossil. The second idea is that this limited geographic population of North American primates all go extinct at the end of the Eocene 34 million years ago and that an African species was able to hop over to South America from Africa during the late Oligocene around 30 million years ago, and that all living South American monkeys are related to this African ancestor. Both South American platyrines and African and Eurasian catarines share a series of traits or characteristics, so most researchers lean toward the second idea a little more favorably. So let's go through some of these traits that are found in monkeys and apes and humans. Um, since we're a member of the Anthropodidae, uh, we share these traits too, so we can use a human skull to take a look at some of these characteristics. 
So they have um, all a fused um, frontal suture, metopic suture at the top of the skull. So the frontal is fused that you see in, in humans. Uh, many other animals don't completely fuse that suture. So the metopic suture is the first one that gets fused. Uh, the fontanelle that's over here that takes a while to get fused, especially in human newborn babies, uh, fuses a little bit later, but the metopic suture, this one up here in the front, is, is fused at birth. So, and that's found in all uh, monkeys, uh, apes, and humans. So they also have a fused um, mandibular symphysis, a mandible, um, where the two halves, the two sides of the jaw, um, where they connect, is completely fused. And so uh, humans and all monkeys have a mandible, uh, so that's a characteristic of anthropoids. The other characteristic is that um, the orbit, so where the eye is right here, is actually kind of enclosed by a bony separation between the post orbital bar, which is right here, and the side of the skull. So there's like a bony sort of flange that basically runs from this bone here, the, the, um, the post orbital bar. And so you can't put your finger behind this opening into the orbit. So there's a uh, flange of um, bone there that connects it to the skull. So the eye socket is really sort of self-contained in there. The other thing that monkeys, humans, and apes all have is stereoscopic vision. So the orbits, the eyes point, both of them point forward. And so there's an overlap of the visual field so you can see and determine depth. Whereas many mammals will have the eyes on the side of the skull. So that bony uh, socket is a very interesting characteristic of monkeys, apes, and humans. The next characteristic is that the lacrimal, uh, which is a bone that has the tear duct that comes through it, is actually found within the orbit. And you can see that here in the human skull where the little opening that's in the, just in the inside of the, the orbit, there you go, that little tear duct is actually inside the orbit there. So this characteristic is where the lacrimal is within the, um, the orbit. Another characteristic is that they lack grooming toe claws. So all monkeys, apes, and primates have nails on all their toes and fingers. They have lost the stupedial artery in the middle ear, which runs through the stirrup of the stapes bone. So uh, lemurs and tarsiers have uh, a remnant of the st stapedial artery that runs through the middle ear bone of the stapes, whereas monkeys, uh, apes, and humans lack this artery. Another characteristic you can find in the skull is the upper molars. They exhibit a hypocone, so they're very sh square shaped rather than triangular shaped uh, of the upper teeth and uh, the upper back teeth. And that's a characteristic that you see in uh, anthropoids, so in monkeys, apes, and humans, is a very square-shaped molars. Another characteristic found in the skull, if we look at the base of the skull, uh, this protuberance right here is what's called the mastoid. And in anthropoids, in monkeys, apes, and humans, the mastoid is pneumatized. So there's little pockets of airspace inside the mastoid cavity uh, next to the, um, the middle ear cavity, which is down in here. So that pneumatization of the mastoid is a characteristic of anthropoids. Another characteristic, but we find it in the lower jaw, is that the lower fourth premolar, which is this tooth here, is bicuspid, meaning it has two large cusps on it. That's a characteristic that we see in monkeys, apes, and humans. Of these nine traits, only six of them can be examined on the isolated skull of Runei, since we lack a set of lower jaws and a skeleton for this fossil. Does Runei have a fused frontal suture or metopic suture on the top of the skull? Well, surprisingly, it does. Is the orbit enclosed within a bony separation between the post orbital bar and the side of the skull? Do they also point forward to allow stereoscopic vision? Well, not completely. While this part of the skull is broken on both sides, there is a passage posteriorly under the post orbital bar, although the skull does, does exemplify forward pointed eyes, which are rather large. So we're going to give this one a half a point. Is the lacrimal within the orbit? Well, no. 
It's actually outside of the orbit, very clearly shown on the fossil. Does the skull have a stapedial artery in the middle ear? Yes, it does. Based on a study of the middle ear uh, con conducted in the 1970s, and based on recent CT scans have been made of the skull. Do the upper molars exhibit hypocones, and are they square-shaped? Yes, they have hypocones and are square-shaped, which is different than earlier tarsier-like primates from North America. Is the mastoid cavity pneumatized with tiny air cavities? Well, based on CT scans, the skull lacks pneumatized mastoid cavities. So of the six characteristics of monkeys, the skull exhibits two or two and a half of the monkey and ape traits. John Wilson called the discovery a problematic beast. He concluded in his original description that maybe it was a specialized tarsier relative and placed the fossil within the Omomayadae family of North American tarsier-like primates. With Runia's unique features resulting when a small nocturnal insect-eating primate evolved into a diurnal primate that ate more plants and fruits. The skull was not quite a monkey, but a bizarre side branch of the tarsier group of primates called the Omomayads. Not everyone agreed, including the prominent paleoanthropologist Alfred Rosenberger of New York, who has defended the idea that Runia is a fossil monkey, placing the fossil within a group called the Proto-Anthropodidae, um, suggesting that the fossil shows enough traits to suggest that it was the grandfather of later monkeys, particularly viewing the post-orbital closure as a stepwise transitional state. I have found that when you include Runia in a phylogenetic analysis, uh, it tends to ping pong back and forth between tarsiers and monkeys, since it features a mosaic of traits. But the long nasals, uh, nasal bones, the lacrimal bones, and other traits and features and characteristics, they're kind of similar to the skull of a mommies from the Middle Eocene of Wyoming. Runei appears to be a bulked up, larger, more diurnal omomyid, but its importance suggests that there was a rich, but largely unknown, fossil primate fauna living in Mexico and Texas uh, during the later Eocene, and possibly extending into the Oligocene. Hence, many Mexican paleoanthropologists have been eager to find Eocene and Oligocene rock units within the borders of their country. So far, only a few sites have been reported from this period, and hopefully someday new fossil primates will be discovered as well, including maybe a North American fossil monkey. This video has been made possible by my fantastic Patreon supporters who've been encouraging me to make more of these videos. I want to thank Brian Clever, Pablo Luzato Figuez, Arcotis1811, Justin Bovey, and my newest supporter, Fred Oli. Thank you. Um, if you want to learn more about supporting this channel and these kind of weekly videos on the fossil record, check out the link below.